And what are your values in life and uh, what values uh, do you instill to your children uh, and to Vitalik specifically? Mm. Those things shifted a lot throughout my life and, you know, the way um, it's a very interesting question because uh, uh, we, as we grow up, there our environment, our genetics, our home, our family, our school, they program certain things into us, and those things then become our filter on life, uh, and uh, they kind of define ourselves, if you will. So, um, and like again, it's not like. I can instill certain values in Vitalik. It's and that's not how the world works. But as people, we kind of catch the overwhelming mm, emotions and patterns around us, and this is how we operate. So I'd say for me, hmm, the values, hmm, freedom, I would say, is one of them. Uh, the freedom of just wanting and thinking in a certain way this is my freedom but the flip side of this is then also other people have their own ways of think and feel so that acceptance of uh, the fact that we all live in separate different universes is uh, is essential to to, mm -hmm. to the core of of this and then you know i have all kinds of values silliness I think it's really important because so people, so many people are serious and they <laughs> they are so focused and intense and serious. Uh, but you know what? Life is light and it is full of all kinds of tense intenses from despair to joy to love to sadness and and there's sometimes war and death and everything. But it still can be very very light. So for me. Uh, it's an essential aspect of how I interrelate to life. And Vitalik, you know, we actually uh, have, share a similar sense of humor, you know, whether I, I instill, though, you know, it's just like combination of genetics and our interactions and whatnot. So we we quite often enjoy, you know, the jokes that we share stuff with each other that many other people look at them like, that's stupid, but yeah, it's funny to me. Um, so I think that... Uh, let's also call this acceptance acceptance of the differences and human beings and the different uh, uh, opinions and ideas like uh, as you probably have come across like uh, quite often people who don't like ethereum who don't like the dialect then they start trying to insult him and being offensive in different ways and I think most of the time uh, he doesn't really take it personally, right? And that's mm -hmm. the same for me. Like somebody can tell me that, like again, like going back to Russian and Ukraine situation, a whole bunch of people told me that I'm a damned traitor of Russia who should just die. I'm like, yeah, that's that's an interesting opinion. <laughs> My opinion is different, right? Uh, so kind of we don't have to consider to continue the act and think the way we do and do what is right we don't have to consider other people as enemies you know uh, they are what they are uh, and we have to do what we have to do uh, but we don't need to judge or blame them for that and actually talking about uh, the russian war against ukraine like uh, you and both uh, you and Vitalik expressed the support mm -hmm. to Ukraine even before the uh, the start of the yes. war. And Vitalik even uh, made a tweet addressing Putin. So uh, mm -hmm. like, wh wh what's your stance on it? And uh, why are you such a keen supporter of Ukraine? And can you tell more about your participation in the Ukraine DAO and uh, Gay.org? Yeah, no, it was really interesting that this a uh, horrible tragedy but also it brought us closer together with Vitalik and he when he was thinking about writing you know when the war was about to start and uh, he wanted to express his position on that and he wanted to express it in Russian again because of his Russian roots so he actually shared with me a draft of that and he asked my perspective on that and I shared my 
thoughts on that and kind of he moved it over and he eventually wrote a tweet which was quite different uh, from that uh, and uh, he's been very clear on his uh, total support of uh, Ukraine and the position to what Russia is doing and we are fully aligned on that and we actually uh, ever since the war story we've been uh, communicating quite a bit and sharing you know different uh, insights about uh, the war and what is happening and kind of discussing that uh, quite a bit so uh, for me it's really uh, it's very simple it's uh, uh, the core values that I treasure freedom nonviolence uh, and all of that kind of stuff they are really embodied by Ukraine in this uh, case they're they're the victim of uh, and I've been kind of following the Russian politics ever since I left Russia, which was about 23 years ago, and kind of like watching in front of my eyes as Russia has been going further and further back into the past, not kind of going forward, but uh, this whole craziness. And, you know, with this Tsar uh, making Russia more and more of this backwards dictatorship and whatnot. So kind of when Russia attacked Ukraine, then there was no doubt in my mind, like, you know, what is the, what is the right side, if you will. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, again, lots of dialogues and it was a very difficult situation for, obviously I knew a lot of people both in Russia and Ukraine and lots mm -hmm. of dialogues happened since then. A lot of the people who I talked to in Russia then, I no longer communicate with because again for me it's a clear cut situation and you know anybody who starts of telling me like oh it's not all so simple you know NATO and blah 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 I'm like hey guys killing people is bad so it's all very simple like attacking another country is bad so let's not try to make things complicated um, so I've been uh, trying to get involved in different initiatives and events and for example been involved a little bit with the ukraine DAO and specifically uh kind of working closely especially early on with the, its leader alona shevchenko supporting her kind of if you will mentor her a little bit in terms of kind of what is the best way to organize this initiative and and, uh, and so on and uh, lately uh last few months been more and more involved with gate.org Kind of, mm -hmm. they have a different mission. They support the suffering Ukraine and families, and you know, doing various donations. Just sometimes talking to people and doing all kinds of stuff. And like again, going back to crypto. You know, when the war started, a lot of people in Russia were appalled by this. But then it, it's becoming more and more dangerous for them to express their views. And one Russian NFT artist reached out to me and he wanted to sell his art and donate it to, to Ukraine, but he was scared to do that um, by himself. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, sure, let, let's do that. And uh, I actually sold uh, his work through my account a couple of times and uh, raised some money that I matched and then I, all of that was donated to Ukraine. So again, like uh, when we look at this situation, it's it's a huge overwhelming tragedy, and you know it's really hard for us to to, to process that. A lot of emotions, but what do we do when we will end, and how will then? Nobody has a clue. But the thing is, like, it doesn't have to stop us. We can still do whatever big or little things we can keep doing, supporting people, stating opposition, donating money, doing this and that, and it's like. I live in Toronto in Canada, and there's a bunch of people who uh, immigrated from, uh, who had to flee Ukraine, and then they moved here to Canada. So supporting them here and supporting the local Ukrainian community, they have all kinds of really cool initiatives also supporting Ukraine from here. So we all can contribute them in whatever way is available currently to us. Yes, it's really great to see that you such a supporter of Ukraine and especially uh, how supporting the crypto community is and especially the leaders of uh, this industry and uh, how we see as well the crypto became uh, for, for some people complain that they just like uh, for money laundering and etc. Hmm. But now it became a powerful charity tool. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm really uh... I belong to this uh, chat group on Telegram where there are, uh, it had a lot of Russian-speaking people uh, which were from Russia and Ukraine. And then the channel from the crypto channel actually became kind of a Ukraine support channel. And all the people who did not support Ukraine, they 
they they they left or were kicked out and it's really awesome to see how many different big and small initiatives are going on how people are using crypto to support ukrainian army to support you know specific humans and all of that stuff and actually my personal expectation and dream that i hope that uh, uh ukraine can become uh, the world leader in uh, showing other countries how crypto can be used for all of this good stuff for transparency of charitable initiatives for supporting humans directly and so many other ways and nfts and whatnot and i think it's uh, uh that that is that's been the, the case for the last six months ukraine has been very effective in using uh, blockchain and crypto tech for for its goals yeah hopefully ukraine will win soon the war and uh, can become the real leader in country in the industry to, to attract more good businesses and etc yeah and definitely uh, how do you see the future of web3 and what type of applications will be the most useful and what type of applications do we really need i think we're quickly moving into the era of mass adoption um and the underlying technology still has to improve uh the issues of cost scalability privacy they have to be addressed and they are being addressed and specifically for ethereum their chosen approach has been through so-called level two systems systems like you know zk sync and uh starknet and optimism and, uh, optimism and arbitrum and so on uh, uh and you know whatever the initiative side polygon so i think that's uh, uh a lot of a lot of their work is uh, currently happening to address all of the things that i mentioned scalability cost per transaction uh as well as the privacy aspect of this um and um as uh, the technology matures i think that we will see more and more different applications obviously it all started with all kinds of financial applications um, the DeFi, then it went into art like nfts and then the gaming and I, so i think that all of these areas will keep developing and i think that we will actually see more and more other stuff i think things like uh, uh identity systems reputation systems uh, will uh, become much bigger aspects of that and all in all i i think that it will the blockchain tech will become more persuasive uh more prevalent in many industries uh but uh um it will become less visible people will stop talking about uh blockchain they will just kind of use their systems like we no longer talk about internet so much but we use specific systems like facebook on twitter or whatever it is we use yeah hopefully we'll see more useful applications in the future and bigger mass adoption thank you for such interesting conversation sharing your views on the industry your values and thanks for the support of my country of ukraine Slava Ukraine.